Yao from Officeworks, who is the Head of Strategy, Architecture and Planning. And I'll be talking to Darren today about putting the security in DevSecOps. So that key word in DevSecOps and that new word, and just off the back of that question, um, definitely we'll be talking about how it's changed. So Darren, um, if you are around, if you want to say a quick hi so that we know that we can hear you and see you. Can you guys hear me? Uh -oh. Yes, we uh -oh. can. Cool. And Nitin, right. I'll just get you to turn your um, mic and camera off as well so that we can um, move to the next one. Awesome. Great. Excellent. Okay. Well, thanks, Darren, for being here with me today um, and joining us. I really appreciate having you, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Um, I wanted to kind of give you an opportunity to quickly kind of introduce yourself to some of our attendees um, who may not have heard of you. So if you wanted to give people a little bit of an intro of you, your background, um, what you've been working on and how this topic is relevant for you, that would be great. Cool. And I'm very happy to be here uh, to share with you guys this morning. Um, so look, I'm Darren. I look after strategy, architecture and planning at Officeworks. I'm quite newish in office books, uh, but before office work, I spent a fair bit of time in mainly telcos and media. Um, so, especially in Foxtel Group for the last 10 years before I joined office books and in the retail space. Um, my focus has been very much in architecture, engineering, and platforms era. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a terminology, but you know, when things need to happen, we all go in and make it happen. <laughs> so uh, a job title doesn't mean much, but it's more what we have been putting up and transforming the the, uh, the platforms and infrastructure for, for the companies. So look, uh, I think today I'm very passionate around um, more the people and change uh, that we element of DevSecOps. So I think when um, Isaac say, hey, come along and have a chat. I'm so excited uh, just to share a bit of how can we pivot this motion of change. Um, so yeah, that's, that's me. No, fantastic. And we're really, really excited to have you here today. Um, so actually just following off the back of that poll question about how the focus yeah. of security has changed over the past 12 months in DevOps, what's your perspective and take on that? Do you align with the majority, the 90% that said that it had, or are you in that 10% that say that it remains the same? No, no, I'm in the 90% of the bug, 100%. Um, so I think um, uh, this is an interesting question, right? Because, uh, you know, like when we first started off in this waterfall traditional way, then we went through an era of agile, break into smaller pieces, run faster, iterate with the business. Uh, I think those are really good, but because I think those fundamentally have break things into smaller chunks so that IT and business can iterate very quickly and we get speed to market, which is great. But uh, I think fundamentally, uh, did we bring security along the journey? Uh, they are kind of at the last part of the cabin most of the time. Did we bring the, uh, we, we brought the ops guys with us, but the security is generally still the tail end. Um, so I think there is a lot of room for improvement in this area. Yeah. Why do you think the security mm -hmm. element has been kind of the the last thing to join on the on the tail end? Why do you think it's uh, been the third <laughs> of the three? Hopefully, there's no other security guys here. <laughs> How's it going to look? Uh, I think there's a breakdown into your life the challenges, right? So let's start from the problem statements and see, I mean, this is more a trend and observation. So I think I'll break down into three fundamental bucket, right? So I think the first thing is the culture shift, right? Is if I take a step back is, um, back to Isaac's question is, why is security not instilled into the whole pipeline um, of a workflow today, right? And a lot of people are trying to. I think the first thing here is, from a cultural shift perspective is, you know, as developers, right? First instinct, get code up in market fast, uh, functionality first, uh, business requirements first. Then ops, which is great. We have, you know, stabilization of, of platforms, which is which is all competing um, KPIs. So we kind of brought the dev and ops together for the last five to eight years, which is great. But um, security kind of becomes, um, 
the the uh, ivory tower station that sits there scanning stuff, making sure patching is up to date, and then really catching up with dev is like, hey, uh, developers, can you please make sure that you write a good code and so that we can do code scanning and all those. So we are getting better, but it's still not instilled into the organic workflow. It's almost as like the security folks are rapidly chasing this. And I think we got to take note, right, is we are building more stuff that is fundamentally shifted to the digital world. <laughs> So, which means cyber becomes very important. You know, it, those are the days that we build tools and application for internal use. Everything now we are working from home. We are uh, the digital experience is mm. in hyper growth. So, all the apps and services we build are all into the world internet straight away. So, security is almost like you cannot even negotiate. You have to pick into into the workflow. So, I think this culture shift of computing direction needs to be uh, ironed out over time. But that's one challenges. Um, the other part is, um, I call it security awareness and compliance. I feel like um, my, I think a lot of my um, peers in, in the cybersecurity world is, um, one of the research that they shared with us one day was, you know, one of the most common problem with generally uh, across technology departments is security and compliance is like, um, it's like, uh, I gotta do it again. Oh yes, it's another thing that we gotta work on, all right? But but it's the awareness is like, when a developer, when an ops guy goes in, uh, what does it mean for them? What does it mean security and compliance? What does it mean for the company? I think that awareness and education um, need to be right from the very beginning. And it's mm -hmm. like, security team is generally a bit, you know, like, let's say four to 10 people, right? But dev teams and engineering team will be like hundreds easily, right? Mm. So it's like 10 mm -hmm. people trying to convince 100 people that security is important. So I think we just got to step up the, the cadence in, in the awareness, right? So I think that's one challenge as well. Um, yeah. But other than that, I think the last bucket is around um, the, the, the two sets that in security been using um, are traditionally not big in the CI CD workflow. <laughs> so it becomes more resistant for the dev and ops guys to, to bake into the process. Things are changing, but there's some area that a lot of vendors are trying to create more two sets of products that is more developer friendly uh, into the workflow. So I think that's, that's something mm -hmm. that is changing rapidly, which we need to look, look out for, yeah. So I think that's kind of the three key challenges back to why your question of, why security is at kind of the afterthought. We've got to bring it up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that kind of leads on to my question about challenges next, about implementing a DevSecOps strategy. Do you have anything additional to say about the challenges there with the implementation of it all? Ooh, um, implementation-wise, uh, that's a that's an interesting question. Um, the I think the... <sighs> I have a saying, right, is I think this is, might sound very common sense to everyone, but the only thing that is variable in this entire equation is the human being, <laughs> which is us. <laughs> Everything yeah. is static. Uh, the, the process is created by us. I think it sounds very common sense, but I think the, the success criteria that I can see um, how we bake in security into DevOps is is really how we have done uh, way back when we break when we bring dev and ops together. Remember the, those challenges like we have dev ops, and then we run agile. That fundamental um, change uh, is the goal of that change is to make sure that we collectively build something that we can support. It hasn't changed anything. Security is the same thing. Mm. We got to build something that we can support that is secure, right? So I, I think uh, a lot of companies and organizations have intrinsically been doing this already, but I guess we've got to make it really, really clear, the process and the handover point, the interaction point, and at different checkpoints between planning, coding, building, you know, testing, release, deploy, operate, what is security's uh, deliverables and checkpoints that is efficiently baked into the workflow? Right, those needs a lot of discussion 
is because it encompasses processes and tool set. So um, there's no perfect solution because every workflow is different. But I think the, the, the key criteria here is how do we make sure that um, we have 10 train cabins, every train cabins that de developer and operational guys, DevOps, right? How do we fit the security guys into every single cabin, which is every cabin is like a sprint, right? We sprint and we plan, right? So I think that's, that's really an organization change. And I feel like um, the key criteria here is to make sure that we um, think about the end outcome. The end outcome is important is we are not trying to build a code. We're trying to build a code that is secure and, and high performance, right? That's very common sense. So I think, look, that's, that's my perspective on that on that question, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I know that you come from a different end of the dev set, well, being that you are in the, the architecture side of things. So how do you see enterprise architecture and architecture enable DevSecOps in organizations? <laughs> Um, yeah, this is a very tricky question. Um, <laughs> look, I think um, the, I use a keyword here, the keyword is influencing. Um, the, the influencing factor here is because from a DevSecOps um, perspective, it's really a, 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 an approach, a way of building staff securely a way is this a way a way that people come together in teams uh, using the right tool sets right so from an enterprise architecture perspective is okay it's you know, the usual way the usual way that we work is okay the business need x i got a capability y right but the business now is DevSecOps. if i'm going to have a DevSecOps business users what capability do i need to instill in the IT infrastructure to make sure that they can work uh, in a DevSecOps ways. So, which means that I might um, look at the two sets with them that can instill into their workflow. I might influence in terms of the structure. I might influence in terms of the ways of working, the process, right? So, I think uh, those are the core because it's nothing around, you know, like architecture strategy. It is less about those. It is fundamentally big into influencing the ways of working and the common tool sets so that we can make insecurity right from the start, right? And uh, I feel like there's a few stages along the way. I think my my suggestion here is if you guys going to adopt the desktop ops, right, is uh, obviously the security have to come on board, developer and ops. But then the thing here is they'll be looking at each other say, okay, cool, what are we going to do next? Um, are we going to use a common tool set or not? Uh, but who's going to be the... Um, agnostic empire referee. So the, the architecture is very, very it's, it's standalone, it's agnostic. They say, look, this is what we should be doing. So it, it kind of becomes an influencing way to navigate them and help them come together, right? Because everyone has their own perspective. Dev want to build fast, security want to be secure, ops want to make sure they stabilize. Architecturally, I want all three, <laughs> right? So so this is where my role comes in. So I think that's, that's kind of my perspective on that question, yeah. Definitely. Now, if you remember the first poll of the morning that I asked the audience, it was around how far along people were in their DevOps journey. And most people said that they hadn't started, like they hadn't started a DevOps journey or they were kind of in those very immature stages of their journey. What would be your top three tips for someone who's listening in today about how they could start their DevOps, DevSecOps journey? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think first thing first is realistically not a lot of people are in that journey yet. I think uh, some of us might be unconsciously doing it, which is great. Uh, but I think don't don't get too too worried by the term DevSecOps. At the end of the day, it's around how do we build secure applications in an iterative manner. Right, that's a key question, right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, my three tip here is um, very, very simple is select something um, smallish in terms of, um, don't start into the core platforms area, start from a, a, a functionality to start off, right? 
uh, or a, a project that is quite independent. Uh, in our case, for example, uh, my previous bookings is we tend to start something more more controlled and, and a lot more familiar with. And then we use that as a test bed to put in security up front. And then we 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 kind of told everyone, you know, look, this is beta trial. Uh, let's be all friendly. And then we work through and then we actually use that becomes the first draft of the process. And then we will learn, okay, these are the two sets that is not really working. It, it's quite weird when we do static code testing versus dynamic code testing. It, it's not working. Then we it mm. so we are building a process iteratively as well. If you get what I mean, right? So I think that yeah. is find something that is very contained and controlled, and then get a few evangelists. Uh, evangelists that you know, everyone must be everyone must believe that this is a good thing and come together. And yeah. then if everyone believes, you produce something great. So I think that's the second part is find people that really, really big into this idea and really come in and champion it for you, right? Because it cannot be done by one person. You almost need a evangelist from the dev, evangelist from the site, evangelist from the ops, and then come together and a bit of change management, then I think you will start to take off, right? I think that, that is kind of the key ingredient, I think. Um, so that's the two tips. Uh, I don't have the third one, but I'll give that two <laughs> tips to me. No, perfect. I think two tips is great. Um, did you have any, I actually might just put out to the audience, if you've got any questions for Darren while we've got a bit of time, feel free to send them in and we can ask them live. So while we've got Darren's brain, um, you may as well ask the question and see what his thoughts are. But do you have any final thoughts um, for our audience members on uh, this topic? Do you have any final things you'd like to share uh, with everyone today? Um. Yeah, I think the key takeaway here is um, it, at the end of the day, you know, I to sum up what I've been sharing, right, is largely around process, tools, and the ways of working, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We did it before with when we did from traditional waterfall to agile, then we came up with dev and ops, really trying to make sure that their KPIs are all coming together. So this is no different. Is death, sec ops, it's the same thing, but the product that we're building nowadays are fundamentally shifted. We are building something that is uh, customer facing, more exposed to security vulnerabilities. And then those are not so uh, obvious maybe 10 years ago, but now it becomes more and more. But my point here is we have done it before. I don't see why not we, we strengthen it with security, right? So I think we just got to go through the same process to really nail down the ways of working and the tool set and the structure, and then get the right tools, because tool is enablers, right? Don't start from the tools first. Always start from the process and the structure first. Mm -hmm. Then the tools come to, yeah. to make sure that we dovetail. But I think if we have these three ingredients, we have done it before. I don't think it's hard. It's just another process that we got to go up to level two or level three, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Darren, for joining me today for this chat. I really appreciate your time, um, taking time out of your schedule to talk to me and share your insights and your wise words of wisdom with our um, audience today. So thank you so much for being here with us. I really appreciate it. No problem. It's my pleasure uh, sharing this with everyone. Thank you very much.